Hello, and welcome to this video where we will depict revision functional endoscopic sinus surgery on a patient's left side. My name is Stephen Hauser. I'm an otolaryngologist, specifically a rhinologist in practice in Cleveland, Ohio. Some of the items you will see used in the surgery include a microdebrider, a endoscope attached to a camera, and a large backbiter. A localization system is essential for revision surgery. The scan has some of the anatomy identified on a coronal view CT scan of the sinus. This anatomy is important in performing a patient's sinus surgery. These CT scan views depict the patient that is being operated upon in this video. As you will note, he has a great deal more disease than it looks like as we're actually doing the surgery. And this is because we have used high dose preoperative steroids, which will be extended in the postoperative period as well, and this helps to achieve the best result during surgery. A localization headset lets us register the patient to the localization system, and here we see the setup for the room. Here we see the microdebrider in use, resecting tissue in the region of the agonizi and the frontal outflow tract in order to maximize the flow from the frontal sinus. The localizer is being used to help identify the structures. There's actually a separate screen which we're looking at which shows us where we are on the CAT scan. A large backbiter will now be used to remove residual uncinate tissue that has been left within the patient's left middle meatus. The uncinate process is at the most anterior edge of the natural maxillary outflow tract. The posterior aspect of the patient's left axillary outflow is now maximized with the microdebrider to remove polyps both from within the maxillary sinus itself and also externally to the sinus. The scope has now actually been dropped below the patient's residual middle turbinate as they have had some partial resection and we are now in their sphenoethmoidal recess looking at the region of the patient's sphenoid outflow which we are widening with the microdebrider to maximize the sphenoid opening. The microdebrider will now be used to resect tissue, bony walls, as well as polypoid disease from within the patient's residual ethmoid cavity. The prior surgeon had left behind multiple bony spicules and walls, which we take down then to join the anterior ethmoid cavity into the posterior ethmoid cavity, creating one common ethmoid cavity. Of course, we are careful about this as we are approaching the patient's skull base, and we do not want to violate this region at all, which would cause a cerebrospinal fluid leak. The localization system is used multiple times during this, though not shown in this video. It appears to be just a suction, and then we would be viewing the CAT scan to make sure that we are indeed in a safe location. The left frontal sinus outflow tract is identified and bone from the back wall of the agronasi cell is noted and this will be removed with an up grabbing forceps. Hyperplastic polypoid mucosa from the patient's remaining middle turbinate is resected with the microdebrider to allow us to essentially carve the middle turbinate into its more normal shape and this will remucosalize quite quickly and be much more normal when the patient comes off of their high dose steroids which we have used preoperatively. An afferent soak plegic can help achieve hemostasis. This will be left in place until the patient is extubated. We then move on to the patient's right nasal cavity to perform similar revision surgery on that side as well.